Hello, 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 and good morning. Yes, good morning. I guess I, it's good morning. I just good morning. Good morning. How is everybody doing today? Welcome to my channel, Life and Lesson. My name is Melissa. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So today's message, today's message is going to be on prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting, yes. It's going to be on prayer and fasting. And um, a lot of people you might have heard of, um, prayer and fasting, how do you pray, how do you fast. And, um, and some people don't know. Some people don't know how to pray. Some people don't know how to fast. So um, it's really, I'm going to put them both together because usually sometimes people... When they fast, they don't know that when you fast, you, you know, you're supposed to pray. Prayer and fasting is supposed to go together. It's supposed to be combined together because when you're fasting, you're praying, you know, um, you're communing, you're communing with God. So, um, it's going to be, it's going together. So it's going to be probably two parts, two or three parts, however way, you know, once I finish it, I believe it's going to be two parts. Okay. So, um. I'm just going to give you what I've been studying, what God gave me, because um, I've been praying and asking God, you know, what to do my video, what to do my video on. So if I don't do, if you don't see a video, that mean, you know, God haven't gave me anything. I wait for him to give me something to do my video on. So the message um, subject today is going to be on prayer and fasting. So first, um, I'm going to deal with... Um, Prayer. I'm going to deal with prayer because I think prayer is the most important thing. It's the most important thing, you know, before you get up in the morning. You know, you wake up in the morning. You should always pray first. You should always pray first. So, um, what is prayer? You might ask, what is prayer? And some people might say, where well, prayer is just, you know, you get on your knees. You're talking to, uh, you're talking to God. Yes, that is true. I'm just going to read some of my notes that I wrote down because uh, I was studying it. So, what is prayer? Prayer is communication with God, request for help, or expression of thanks addressed to God concerning your needs and wants. Okay, so a lot of people, sometimes they don't know that when they go to God and they, you know, you go in prayer, um, sometimes you may get on your knees or however way you pray to God you're giving your petition. You're saying, you know, Lord, give, bless me with this. Lord, give me this. Lord, give me that. But when you pray, you're supposed to, first thing before you pray, you're supposed to always acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Give him thanks and praise for what he have done already and what he about to do. So you give him thanks first. Then you pray for others. And then it's, you make your uh, petition. You It's yourself. So it's thanks first. Acknowledge him first. Then you pray for others. That can be anyone. It could be your loved ones. It can be relatives, neighbors. You know, you pray for them. And then you make your petition, your request. So those are the three ways how you go before God and um, you pray You pray to God. The next thing is how to pray. How to pray. How to pray. So I just went over that with you guys. Um, you know, um... How do you pray? You give him, um, you give him thanks. It's others. Then you make your petition. And when you don't know, now the scripture say when you don't know what to pray for, when you don't know what to pray, you know, I don't know what to, I don't know how to pray. I don't know. You don't know what to pray. Um, the scripture is found in Matthew, Matthew six. Matthew 6, verse 9 and 13. And I'm just going to read it to you. So, you you know, me telling you, you want to say, you know, going based on what I'm telling you. So, Matthew, Matthew 6, verse 9 say, Our Father, which art, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So they call that is called the model prayer. When you don't know what to pray for, you read Matthew 6, 
Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 through 13. That's a, a prayer that you could pray when you don't when you don't know what to pray for. When you get on your if you get on your knees and pray, you can always just open up your Bible, go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 through 13, and read that. And that's the scripture I read sometimes when I don't know what to pray for. When I don't know what to go to him for, I read that scripture. So, and um, where can you pray? Where can you pray? Um, um, because in the scripture, in the scripture, now some people get it, you know, they get it mixed up in the scripture. It says, I'm going to read it to you guys because um, I found that when I went to the prayer retreat. And some people, in the scripture, it says that, and Ma in Matthew, in Matthew 6, verse 6, it says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast has shut the door, pray to the Father, which is in secret, and the Father, which sees in secret, shall reward thee openly. So some people, they think when they read that scripture, oh, it means to go in my closet and close the door. Not necessarily, that's what, you know, I found that at the prayer retreat, not necessarily. Um, you mean not just literally go in your closet and shut the door. It could be like a sacred place. It could be a room. Um, anywhere where there's quiet, there's no distraction. You go in, you close your door, and you pray. And your father, he will reward you in secret. So, I just want to let you guys know that. Because I was the same way. Like, okay, you said go in my closet. I got too much stuff in my closet. How can I go in my closet? So, it don't necessarily mean you go directly in your closet. Now, if you do have a closet and it's empty, it's an empty space. Then, yeah, you can go in your closet. And, you know, you can pray to him in secret that way, too. But you can pray. It can be in your, uh, your room. You can close the door. Or any, you know, anywhere in the house, you know, where it's quiet, where there's less distraction. Or um, if you get up um, in the morning, like it, uh, so the best time to pray, it's like 3 o'clock in the morning, 3 a.m. in the morning, and 6 a.m. in the morning are the best time to pray. But if you just have if you got to go to work around that time, then that's fine. Then you just find, uh, a time, find a set schedule around that time where you can pray. It could be when you get out of work. Or sometimes when, um, sometimes before I go to work, before I used to go to work, I used to go in the bathroom and I used to pray in the bathroom, you know, asking God, you know, to let me have a good day, you know, help me with my coworkers and my bosses, you know. So before I went to work, I would pray. I would go in the bathroom and I would pray. Or as you're on your way to work, you're in the car, you can pray while you're on your way to work. You know, those are different ways, you uh, different places where uh, you can pray. So... Then another thing is um another thing is um I want to show you guys um because some people you know they say, well how do you pray you know you know there some people don't know there are different positions you can pray to God you can pray to God and I want to share them with you I want to show it to you guys this was given to me in um at the prayer retreat. These are the different positions you can pray. This is called the bowing. This is sitting. And this is kneeling. So these are the different positions that you can pray. And this is another one. This is called the prostrate prayer. The walking. The standing. And with, hand, with your hands lifted up. So these are the different um, positions you can pray. And I'm going to, you know, just show it to you again. So, the one I use the most is is, is this one, the bowing. And then sometimes I use this one, you know, and um this one. So, it's different ways you can pray. You know, sometimes people don't know. They might say, oh, I don't feel like getting on my knees. I don't feel like getting on my knees praying. You know, you don't, you know, you don't feel like getting on your knees praying. You know, just look at the different, you know, positions you can pray. You know? So, you know, this was given to me at the, um, this was given to me at, um, uh, a prayer, my church prayer retreat. I went to, they gave us this, you know, so, you know, I thank God for this because all the time, you know, when I was getting on my knees, you know, I was getting on my knees for some time, you know, sometimes you get on your knees and you don't have a floor pillow, sometimes it could, you know, hurt your knees and stuff. So now that I know I can find other comfortable positions that, you know, I can go and I can pray to God. So I just want to, um. I just want to share that with you guys. That's on prayer. And um, um, now fasting. Now fasting, everybody, 
they think fasting is just um they think fasting is just the way it's like, oh you all you doing is you're giving up something. Fasting is not only that you giving up something. Fasting is um you you communing, you communing with God, you getting closer to him. You getting closer, you're denying, you're giving up some things to get closer to him. You know, it could be TV, um, it could be food. Um, it could be anything that's keeping you from having a closer relationship with God. You give that up. You give it up. If it's social media, hey, give that up. You know, and um, since I've been saved, since I've been saved, you know, I had my fasting day. I would fast every every one day out of a week. It was on like a Wednesday. And the only time I would do an extra day of fasting, if like my church, we went on a fast, we went on like a three-day fast or a week fast. That's the only time I would like do more days of fasting. And um, I remember I was work, I was working on a job, and um, one of my coworkers, you know, it was like lunchtime, and she was asking me, and she was, you know, what are you eating for lunch, Miss Johnson? And I was like, nothing. I was like, you know, I'm fasting. And really, when you fast, you're really not supposed to tell people you're fasting. You know, you just say, hey, I'm not eating right now. So me, I said I was fasting. And she wanted to know, okay, what does it mean? And I just, um, you know, I explained to her what does it mean. And then God gave me, the, you know, the scripture. I had, I had a pamphlet and it was on the scripture of uh, fasting and I read it to her. So the scripture that I was led to give her on fasting is 2 Chronicles 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, and I want to read it to you guys so you can know it won't be me just telling you something. <laughs> I always like to have, you know, the word to back it up, you know, scripture to back it up. So 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 say, If my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear their land. So right there, God is saying that you have to turn from your wicked ways. Whatever it is that's causing you to um, to be cut off from God, you need to turn away from it. You need to turn away from it and say, you know what? I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that no more. I'm not sinning no more. I'm not fornicating no more. I'm not drinking no more. I'm not smoking no more. I'm not cussing no more. You need to turn away from those things. And when you turn away from those things, you, you know, you get closer to God. You get closer to God. So that is um, 2 Chronicles 7 or 14. God wants us to humble ourselves. And to humble yourself is like, you know, you just, like, you just totally, you know, you surrender yourself, surrender yourself to God. Like, you know what, God, I'm going to turn away from this thing. I'm going to let that go. That drinking, that smoking, all that fornication, gambling. I'm going to let that, you know, God, you know, draw, close, get closer to him. Get close. So when you're fasting, is you're getting close to God because it's just, you don't have nothing. Nothing, no, you, you know, you're not watching TV. You're not listening to the radio. You're not on social media. Um, you're just in tune with God. You should just have... When you're fasting, you should just have something in front of you, like the word. You should just be meditating on the word daily as you're fasting. Then when you come off that fast, even when you come off that fast, some people might feel like, oh, I you know I'm off the fast now. I can go back to still. I feel that even when you come off that fast, you still should keep that relationship with God. You still should continue to read your word. Don't just be like, oh, I'm off my fast, okay? I don't have to read the Bible no more. I don't have to pray no more. You still, it should be a continuation. You should continue to read. You should continue to fast, you know. And don't let nobody, um, because even me, I go through it, I go through it too. When like if I'm fasting, if I'm on a fast, sometimes you're gonna have you're gonna have some temptation. Just let you know. You're gonna have some temptation. Somebody might come along and you're fasting, and they be like, Hey, I got this. Hey, would you like some of this food? Would you like some of the drink? You could just say, No, no, thank you. Um, you know. I'm not eating right now. You just say, no, thank you. I'm not eating right now. So that's how you, you leave it. And then something else I want to read it to you guys. Um, this was in my Sunday school book, and it said prayer. Where there is much faith, there is much prayer. Where there is little faith, there is little prayer. Where there is no faith, there is no prayer. Much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. 
Where there is no prayer, there will be no power. Where there is no power, there is no holiness. The saints will faint, pray, faint, pray, faint, or backslide. So when you don't pray, when you don't pray, you don't, you know, you don't have no power. You don't have no power. You feel weak. You know, you, um, you, when you go about doing your daily activities and you don't feel like doing your daily activity, you feel weak, you don't feel like doing anything. Like me, sometimes I feel like, I don't feel like cooking. I don't feel like cleaning. I don't feel like doing this. And it's like you're getting weak. You need strength. You know, that's when you need to pick up your word and you need to read. You need to read so you can get that power of the strength that you need. You know, like the word is like, um, when you read God's word, it's like ammunition. It's like you're getting ammunition. You're getting power, you know, like um, power giving you strength, you know. So it's good. It's always good, you know, to pick up your word no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing in life. Pick up your Bible and read it. It ain't got to be like, I tell my girls, I say, you know what? It ain't got to be like a whole full, you know, full, a lot of chapters. It can be just a verse. Just read a verse. Something to give you that strength, that boost to, you know, to keep you going throughout the day. You know, sometimes uh, we say, oh, I need my coffee. If I don't have my coffee, I'm not going to make it through the day. That's the same thing with the word. That's the same thing with the word. If you don't have your word, you won't make it through the day. You won't make it through the day with tests and trials and people co uh, come to try to test you. You won't make it. If you don't have that word, you won't make it. So, Look at your word as like coffee, like you're drinking your coffee. Look at your word as like you're drinking your coffee or your breakfast in the morning. You know, just like you pick up that bowl to get your, your breakfast, pick up your word. Just, just look at the Bible as your breakfast. You're getting your spiritual breakfast, okay? So I just want to, uh, I just want to share that with you guys, you know, on fasting, fasting and praying because, you know, some people, they don't know. You know, they have their own way about, you know, doing things. You know, because they say, well, I have heard it's different types of fasts. It's uh, the Daniel fast, and then it's just the, no, uh, the fast where it's just, just uh, you just drink water. There's no food if you just drink water. Now, I heard it, some people from other churches, they have the Daniel fast where it's just fruits and vegetables. But um, my church, we don't do the Daniel fast. It's just that... There's no food. You just, you know, any liquid is just water. And I do, and I do that. I do that fast like once out of a, uh, one day out of a week. So yeah, you guys, um, I just want to share. I just want to come on here and share that message with you on prayer and fasting. And, um, another thing I want to say is, um, I'm just looking at my notes. Another thing I want to say is, it is discipline. Prayer is discipline. Fasting is discipline. It's not something you might not be able to do on your own. It is discipline. It is. It takes practice. It's discipline. Something you have to, you know, is, it all depends on how bad, how bad do you want to get close to God? If you want to get close to God real, real bad, then you give up something. You give up something. It's going to be a challenge, but you give up something. I've been saved now. It's going on. It's 11 years. And have it been easy for me? No. Have it been a challenge? Yes. But but with the help of God and his strength, I've been doing it. You know, some days I miss. If I miss a day of fasting and I say, okay, Lord, I missed today. I'm going to make it up to you. I'm going to make it up. You know, I don't let it, you know, I don't let it slide. I don't let it go like, well, well I fast away. No, I go and I apologize. I tell him. Lord, I'm sorry. I missed today. I'm going to make it up to you tomorrow. I apologize to him. You know, that's my father, you know. Um, I owe him an apology. You know, I owe him an apology for all, you know, all he's done to me, you know. Without God, you know, we will be nothing. We would not be some people we think that we're doing it on our own strength. We're not. We're not doing it on our own strength. God. God is doing it all. He's waking us up in the morning. He put a roof over our head. He put food on the table, clothes on our body. So with the help from God, you know, we're able to do our daily tests. Um, I was telling my girls today, before they left out from school, uh, one of them, she was just like, because I have, you know, twins. I have twin girls. And so one of them, 
one was already dressed for school. The other one, she was just dragging. And I told her and I looked at her and I felt it in her like she was tired. And I told her and I said, you know what? I said, you know what I do? I said, you tell God. I said, whenever you're feeling that way, you tell God, Lord, give me strength. Give me the strength to do my daily test. So right away she said, Lord, give me strength. <laughs> she said, Lord, give me strength. I said, yes, baby. That's what I do each day. I said, that's how I'm able to get up in the morning to cook, to clean, to wash the dishes. Because I asked him each day to give me strength. So, um, again, I'm trying to see. Um, am I leaving anything out? I want to make sure. Um. I told you why do people fast? Mm. Yes, okay. So I just want to make sure I didn't miss nothing. So, um, yeah. So the next time if if you're fasting already, you already know about fasting, you're fasting already in it, or the ones the other people that don't fast. If they come to you and they ask you why do you fast, you just let them know. You fast because I fast because I want to have a closer relationship with God. I want to have a closer relationship. That's me communing with Him. I want to have a closer relationship with God. And fasting and praying, it shouldn't be taken lightly. It shouldn't be where you just oh you just it shouldn't be for fun. It shouldn't be just you're fasting just for fun or you're praying. It just it should be the meaning. It should be a meaning. Why are you doing it? It should be sincere. Why are you doing it? To have a closer relationship with God, you know? So, I just want to share that with you guys on prayer and fasting. I don't um, want to make this... I thought it was going to be a long, you know, a longer video. But, um, but that's it. I, you know, I gave you guys, you know... What I had, I hope you be blessed by it. Um, you know, share, share with your friends, your family members. You know, them, read them, read the scriptures. Matthew, Matthew six, Matthew chapter six, verse nine through thirteen. If you don't know what to pray for, and when you're fasting, if you don't have a scripture, if you don't have a scripture while you're fasting, um, read Second Chronicles. I think that's the best scripture. Uh, you know, I think that's the best scripture. Second Chronicles 7 and 14. Because it's telling you, it said that if my people, he said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and turn away from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will heal their land. So I think that's the most best, best scripture. That's so on fasting and praying. So, again, it's your girl, Melissa. I hope you be blessed by this message what I just shared with you today on prayer and fasting. Until next time, have a blessed day.